Sorry, hello. It's uh, June the 4th, 2023. I'm in the cave with my very hungry assistant and um, we are trying to rescue and renovate my lovely uh, road bicycle. I only really have one road bicycle on, on, on the grounds of sort of minimalism. Now, uh, there's been catastrophic failure of the rear uh, carbon wheel, which I documented earlier. So I thought I'd... Um, make best plans to change back to the old wheel and also clean everything. And hence the, the story which I'm about to unfold, which is the fact that I've been trying to clean the uh, SRAM Red XG1190 cassette. Uh, I've just looked at the price of the cassette and uh, clearly I was in a very um, liberal mood when I bought this damn thing because this single cassette costs over 300 euros. Uh, so we're going to zoom in on the cassette, and and this is just a story about engineering and and um, the fact that engineering can be seen in so many places that you don't expect. So I put so I put this cassette in some um, spirit cleaning fluid. It's a monoblock cassette. It's actually eleven speeds. It's a ten speed solid, and then there's a, a single gear that attaches to the end to give you the eleven eleventh speed here. Uh, and um, it was all going so well until um, several immersions of um, white spirit later, I noticed there were lots of black things sticking out from the, the intermediate points of the, of the cassette. And it turns out that this cassette, whilst it is a kind of monoblock cassette, so a single piece of steel, which they say is lighter than a titanium cassette because it's, it's machined out of one piece, um, it's got something called, we've gone to the website to check, what's it called? It's called a stealth ring elastomer. So a stealth ring elastomer is basically um, between the, the cogs of this cassette. Okay, put that in focus. Uh, so between each of these cogs is a piece of rubber, or I should say was a piece of rubber. Because when I put this in the white spirit, all the pieces of rubber completely expanded and, and and distended and so I've had to pick out all of these pieces and I suppose the idea was that between these each each ratio on this monoblock cassette this piece of rubber would be there so that when you change the chain from one gear to the other gear it would sit and touch that rubber and be quieter when you were changing the, the uh, changing changing gears so all of that technology has now disappeared. <laughs> and I'm presuming, I haven't tested, but I'm, I'm rather hoping that the cassette's still gonna function. I can't see any technical reason why the cassette would not function without those uh, rubber sort of in intermediate points, intermediate rings. But who's to know? So I'll only know that when I put the, um, put it all back together. I've got a new chain and I have my, my super informative um, cycle expert in London who's told me that I need to actually clean, uh, degrease this chain first, uh, with again, white spirit, then meth spirit, and then oil it. So it appears to be, a th so, so to actually do things totally professionally, I need to again, degrease this chain. With a, a, the recommendation is white spirit, then meth spirit. Then after that's done, you actually put the lubrication of your choice onto the chain, because um, apparently it comes with sort of shipping grease and not grease for the road. So the best practice is to do all that malarkey. So we've got to do all of that. We've got to reassemble the cassette. We've got to find the old wheels, <clears throat> which I've got, I can show you the old wheel here. Here's one of the old wheels. It's a Dura Ace wheel. So can we zoom out there? Can I zoom out? Yeah. So on the right hand side, you see the, uh, the new or the old Dura Ace wheel. It's been used a fair amount, and on the left is the failed carbon fibre tri-spoke wheel, which uh, has just basically fallen apart at the um, at the centre here. So I've done the easy bit. I've done the video. I'm not, now actually got to actually <laughs> got to do the work. <laughs> if only I had a little set of minions to do all that for me, but apparently no, I am that minion. I'll see you later, Dari. Dari, hello, we are making some progress. The wheels are on and the next stage is to look at the chain. So uh, unbeknownst to me, um, I've been advised that you can't just put a chain on a bicycle, you have to do some 
degreasing and regreasing to make it absolutely top notch. So I have been following uh, instructions. We have the Shimano uh, Dura Ace chain here, 11 speed. Um, it's been in white spirit. It's now in methylated spirit. And uh, I don't appear to have my old um, Decathlon bicycle oil spray for um, the chain. But when they used to sell it, it used to look something like this. So that's what I would have put on in previous times um, to the chain. It was a spe specialised um, chain lube, uh, not lubricant with Teflon, but specialised chain lube. Now, these days, uh, I consulted my partner, who's rather more obsessed with chain cleaning than I am. And if we zoom in, I've just found out what she's got in her stable. So she's got two little, she's got ceramic. Can I zoom in? Come on, iPhone. Can you do it? Can you do it? Yeah, you can. So she's got ceramic wet chain lube and muck off dry lube. So I think I'm going to be using one of those. So that the, I'm in stage two at the moment. I've, like I say, I've put uh, the chain into white spirit, cleaned it off. Now it's in methylated spirit, and I'm waiting for that to have its effect. There we are. I've cut the chain to the exact length of the old chain using a chain cutting tool. Uh, there's a quick clink here. So Shimon, as you may know now, I've got, I mean, oh, my, my, my information is so many years out of date, but uh, <laughs> they do have a quick link on their chains now. Still not very good, but there you go. Uh, yeah, so we're waiting for the maths to uh, to do its job. Then we're going to dry off that chain, and then we're going to pull it, put it onto the bicycle. Here, and then we're going to put the quick link on, and then finally we're going to put the chain loop on, and then all should be well. And assuming the um, those rubber portions of the of the uh, cassette weren't actually necessary. As you can recall, they've, they've been removed because they sort of fell off when I put the uh, the block into, into white spirit. Um, yeah, we should have a working bicycle. Let's, let's wait for the next, next update. Okay, Daryl, we're in stage <clears throat> three where the chain is on, but not quite um, quick link closed. Uh, and I thought I'd check on the interweb as to if the chain is on correctly. And boy, is it confusing. So let's start from first principles. This is the chain. It's a Shimano Dura Ace chain. It's a 11 speed HD901. Now, when you Google it on the interweb, um, it says it's a directional chain, meaning to say it can only go on in a certain way. Uh, so if you can imagine, if you've got the chain, um, something like a ruler, but if you, if you imagine that's the chain, the chain could sort of go on, clearly speaking, that way, front-wise, or it could go on back-wise. But also the chain, if that's the top of the chain, the chain could be, could be, um, if the if the front chain wheel is here, then I can mount it on the top or the bottom, and that will also reverse the direction. If it's mounted on the top, that, that, if, that, if it's mounted on the top, then you can imagine as you go around, it's going around that way. But if it was mounted on the bottom, there's the ch front chain ring, then as it goes round, it's going to go round, if that's on the bottom, it's going to go round that way. So you can see that that's different. So according to the interweb, um, the, the lettering must be on this side. And so uh, let's go round backwards to where the quick link is. how this can be so complicated <laughs> there's the quick link there's the quick link and the quick link is pointing the quick link is also directional so you have to make sure the quick link is pointing that way and it is so this is the top of the uh chain wheel you can see the it's pointing that way and then if i look with my super duper magnifying glass i'm going to just read the front i'm going to read the front face of this text as as i rotate it to the left so we've got shimano correct way up we've got v via upside down then we've got shimano the correct way up shimano correct way up we've got hg upside down <laughs> uh, 
so difficult to see from this sort of super magnification. Then we've got HG correct way up, Shimano 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 correct way up. UB upside down, UB correct way up, UB upside down, UB upside down, Shimano correct way up. And you think, oh, this is great because the word Shimano is always up, up the correct way up. But hang on a minute. No, now the word Shimano is upside down. Now UB is upside down. Now Shimano is correct way up. And it says, for example, Shimano CNHD901, correct way up. Next. So the jury's out. <clears throat> there's, there's, if you were to mount the chain in one direction, Certainly, the, the text is always facing outwards, but so this this part of the chain is always closest to the smallest cog, and the back of the chain here is always is always not. There's no writing on the back of the chain. That's always closest to the largest uh, cog. However, it's unclear as to whether to to make the link at the bottom or the top. Right. It's unclear whether to make the link at the bottom or at the top. Um, so I think I've done all that I can. I believe um, it's ambiguous. And just to make matters more annoying, the only piece of paper that's in the the the, um, the instructions for the chain talks about the quick link. And it's saying how to, to make sure that the quick link, when placed on the bottom, is pointing that way. So that, in other words... That arrow is pointing on the top when it's on the top. It doesn't make any reference to the chain being uh, directional at all. So according to the internet, it is directional, but according to this documentation, it's not breaking a word. So I think I've done enough. I'm going to pull the stand on the pedals that pulls a quick link together, and then that's not going to come apart. Okay, so I've been out for a little test cycle of about through two or three hundred meters and by standing on the pedals whilst pedaling uh, you can see now that this quick link here is fully closed okay and you can also tell that by the fact that if the quick link is not closed and as you rotate it backwards this dimension is wrong and so that it won't sit on the chain correctly but as you can see it sits on the chain perfectly we've got the text on the outside i believe my work is done um, oh except for the fact that these wheels these dura ace wheels are old school wheels and if we zoom back out and have a look at the the, the actual um, width of these wheels in other words this width it's far less than the width of the carbon wheels the carbon wheels are kind of more uh, up to date in that their their width here is way wider so the brakes of course are now completely loose because that these whole this whole um, width of the actual metal frame of the wheel is thinner so that's the last adjustment i've got to make and it should be done